Welcome to the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast. I'm Tim Young. Uh, you might know me from the radio. You might know me from here. And make sure that you like, subscribe. You do all the things that you want to do when you want to follow me here on uh, on Rumble. Uh, you can also find this on YouTube. You can find it on American Greatness. Uh, you can find it everywhere podcasts are put. And uh, also make sure you're following me on Twitter at Tim Runs His Mouth. I want to thank before we start with anything here, uh, our podcast sponsor, CigarsDirect.com. I love CigarsDirect.com. I can get all the cigars that I want from there. And uh, this back here behind me, where can I point? There we go, right there. If you don't see it, is a hint at things to come. That's an Angel's Envy uh, 10th anniversary cask strength box. I've got my buddy who founded Angel's Envy, Wes Henderson. Uh, we're going to be doing the Let's Drink Bourbon podcast as part of this series as it comes along. Uh, the very first season of Let's Drink Bourbon, I know you guys may not like some of these guests, but we had Brad Paisley on. We had uh, Bill Samuels Jr., who was the patriarch of Maker's Mark. We had uh, Mitchell Tenpenny. We had a lot of great singers, a lot of great entertainers, um, decent people. And in this next season, I think we're going to have some of his other friends, uh, like folks from Metallica, on to talk about both whiskey and music. So we're not just going to do politics. We're not just going to talk about the things that are going on during the day uh, and the news of the day. But uh, we're going to talk about uh, all of the fun stuff. It's okay to have fun. All right. It's okay to have fun. Just put it that way. All right. So here we are. Uh, I want to talk about something first. There's something that is breaking on the internet today as I record this. And I want to make sure that you guys don't get excited. People are saying that this is from the Fannie Willis trial. Uh, just a warning. Uh, there's uh, a little bit, a little bit of language on this one, but uh, they're claiming that this is the name of her Bluetooth. Uh, this is a lie. I love to fact check things here, especially when they're crazy. This is a lie. This is actually from a different trial. This is from, I believe, the armorer in the um, the shooting case for, uh, what was it, Rust, the Alec Baldwin movie. The, the name that would appear on, say, a Bluetooth device is found on line uh, 32. A hold on to your hats. Which is uh, Gorilla Grip Pussy Pal. Okay. That is not Fannie Willis. I'm sorry. I, I regret to inform you. I know a lot of people were very excited that it could be Fannie Willis. Uh, it is not. And by the way, it's Fannie. It's not Fawny. I don't want to hear the crap pronunciation of names. Remember, it was Kamala before it was Kamala. They. I don't understand if this is some sort of a psyop or something to play with your mind so that they can screw you up when it comes to pronunciation of things. It is not Fawny. There is no W in that. It is Fannie. And she is trash listening to her talk, but not trashy enough that that's the name of her uh, her Bluetooth cell phone. I, I regret to inform you that uh, that is not the name of her cell phone. Let's get into very serious news before we get into some funnier stuff today. Uh, I want to talk about this, and, and hopefully it'll come up. Maybe it won't. Uh, there is a story that was brought up by, I believe, the Epic Times. No, it was brought up by Scripps News, which means it's a, a serious, it's more serious than uh, when it hits the mainstream. Here, so this is a story. Uh, children are going missing as they come across the border and they go to their foster families that come across the border with uh, the the migrants or illegal immigrants or whatever you want to call them. Let's watch this. I haven't watched this full clip yet. I'm going to react to it with you. Migrant runaways, children who came across the southern border alone were placed by the U.S. government with an adult sponsor and then vanished. Now they're saying migrant runaways. I don't think they're runaways. And I think a lot of us don't think that they're runaways. I think there's a I think there's some massive human trafficking going on here. I don't I don't believe that they these are runaways at all. Kids like 15-year-old Yenny, who was last spotted with a black backpack getting into a white pickup truck. No one will say where she went. Selena was just 16 when she ran away from her sponsor's home weeks ago. Cesar, also 16, left his uncle's home one day and never returned. I mean, again, they're they're saying they left it. We do not know what happened to these kids. We do know that the uh, cartels are, are human trafficking. They traffic children. They traffic people as well. I don't for one second believe that they are just simply runaways. I don't for one second believe that they are runaways. I think that they have been trafficked, and I think they have a destination, and the destination is not the foster families that they're staying with. Each of these children disappeared from the small town of Culpeper, Virginia, about a two-hour drive from Washington, D.C. So that's just Culpeper, Virginia, by the way. 
uh, before we get into this. That's just literally all of those children disappeared from Culpeper, Virginia. We're not talking about like middle of nowhere in Texas, you know, El Paso, wherever, right? Anything on the border. We're talking about established up in Virginia and they disappeared. So imagine how many are getting trafficked around the country. I don't for one second believe that these are just simply runaways. And I don't think anyone does at all. I don't think anybody's buying this uh, bill of goods here from the media. This is all my missing kids are here. These files are pretty thick. It's Culpeper police detective Norma McGuckin's job to try to find them. And she says her cases all seem to unfold the same way. The sponsor will take him in or her. And then within 30 days tops, a couple days sometimes, and then the child just picks up and leaves. Yeah, but I mean, again, again, and, and who even knows? They come with no ID. They don't know what they're doing. They have these files. They have a couple of pictures of these kids. They come with no parents because they're being trafficked. Probably there, it could be that their families are being threatened. It could be lots of things. But again, if these kids were here because they were seeking asylum, wouldn't they want to stay with these families? I, I believe wholeheartedly this is a human trafficking campaign that's going on. Called this a crisis. We had 21 missing still on, that's a, a, crisis. on a small town, yeah. a very small town. Every chance she gets, McGuckin drives through these neighborhood streets looking for any sign of the missing kids. I mean, that's, let's be real here. She's going around looking like looking in neighborhoods like they're a lost dog. She on treats. Come on now. I, I, yeah, it's ridiculous. Let's pull this back up. Pretty much all of these neighborhoods, you can point to a house where yes. an unaccompanied minor has run away. Yes, on this side right here. Again, the, this, is a, this is a serious problem that's happening. 21 kids in Culpeper, Virginia are magically missing. This is human trafficking is what's going on here. That they are part of a system that doesn't involve the United States uh, that going forward, nobody's paying attention to. And the Biden administration isn't paying attention to. They know about it at the border. They know what's happening. They, they know 100% what's happening. But they're letting these kids go. And uh, they're not monitoring them. And, and they don't care. The Biden administration doesn't care. Absolutely doesn't care. Why would they? That would, that would, uh, they'd have to be blamed for something if they, if they cared. Uh, in other news today and this week, as uh, the, the well, I'm not sure when you'll be seeing this, but other news today, Mitch McConnell is stepping down as uh, leader of the Senate, the mi Senate Minority Leader in November. Now, here, look at that, by the way. This picture is ridiculous. It looks like he's uh, ascended to the heavens there with this picture from NPR. Man, they, they must really love him if they're doing the uh, that imagery there with the the light, the dome behind him that makes him look like he's. Uh, He's a, an angel. Uh, Mitch McConnell deciding to step down. I don't know where the step... Okay, well, I'll just... I'll read this. Uh, this will be my last turn as, term as Republican leader of the Senate. McConnell said his voice cracking. I'm not going anywhere anytime soon. However, I will be... I will complete the job my colleagues have given me until we select a new leader in November, and they will take the helm next January. So, uh, Mitch McConnell, who has famously frozen now multiple times, people... Uh, and medical experts have weighed in and said it looks like he's having a stroke uh, twice. He looks terrible, by the way, in person. He has aged incredibly. How old is Mitch McConnell, by the way? Is he in his 80s yet? Let's see. Mitch McConnell is 82 years old. 82-year-old Mitch McConnell. They're going to roll him out to uh, to run policy and vote aye on things the way they did on Diane Feinstein. She had no idea where she was. She gave up power of attorney to her kids. But uh, they kept rolling her out to vote on things. That's exactly what's going to happen here with Mitch McConnell. I don't expect anything else uh, to go on with him. You have to remember, he's the person, too, who said, we don't want a government shutdown, and he wants to send money to Ukraine. That's the, the big thing he doesn't want to shut down our United States government for so that he can send money to Ukraine. This guy has been pretty much the worst GOP leader in the Senate. Uh, that we've had in modern times. And, and again, we wouldn't know how bad he was if not for the performance of Trump and exposing exactly what happened. There. But Mitch McConnell, I, again, you know, he's going to resign. Don't get excited, by the way, with him resigning. Don't at all get excited with him resigning. Because I'll tell you what's going to happen. His replacement is going to be John Cornyn. Or it's going to be somebody who is... Uh, just as just as right away, Lindsey Graham. It'll be somebody just as old. It'll be somebody just as bad as Mitch McConnell. 
do not expect him to be replaced by someone who is like, uh, oh, you know, like a Tim Scott, even like a Tim Scott would be good, right? Younger, uh, might be Trump's VP pick. Who knows? He's one of the rumored names. But I couldn't imagine it being someone who is America first taking his place. You don't expect a Mike Lee who has been out there fighting against uh, big tech. That ain't gonna, it ain't gonna be him. They don't want him in that kind of position. They don't want anybody. They don't expect anybody in the position of minority or maybe majority leader. Who even knows? Who? I mean, there is a chance that Republicans could win back the Senate. I'll be at a slim one. I don't know what they would do with that power. Nothing. But don't expect somebody uh, good to take the place of Mitch McConnell. Don't expect somebody responsible to take the place of Mitch McConnell. Uh, <laughs> Don't expect somebody America first. I would just I would just assume it's going to be a Lindsey Graham or a John Cornyn. I mean, hell, Susan Collins, you know, is Murkowski still around? Might not throw her in there. It's going to be somebody like that's just as bad, if not worse. Do not expect someone good to take Mitch McConnell's place. And 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 don't get excited. Don't I just don't. It's just ain't happening. It ain't happening. It's, it's not going to be someone good. So don't wait up. Don't wait up. And he's not going to retire from the Senate. He's 82 years old. They're going to wheel him out. He will be a member of, of the Senate and he will run for re-election, I bet you. He will be a member of the Senate until he's 98 or however long they can keep rolling him out. Because if they continue to roll him out after he's literally had many strokes in public and just frozen, and we're just assuming those are many strokes, it's what they sure do look like. That's what some medical experts have said. Uh, they definitely are. Do not expect Mitch McConnell to uh, retire anytime soon. If he ain't going to retire when he's having mini strokes, he ain't going to retire at all. I, I Again, let me see if I can find the Diane. Stein. I want to find this Diane Feinstein video because this is, uh, and I have it here. I should have all this stuff pulled up immediately. Why would I? Let's see if I have it here. Videos. Uh, it looks like I do not have it. They've changed the way that you can access your media on, uh, well, I mean, I can, I can show you this picture of her. That is, uh, Diane Feinstein. You can see she was not in good shape when they when they had her they were rolling her in that's what she looked like when they were rolling her into the uh to the senate to vote just assume just assume that that will be that's how mitch mcconnell's going to look before they get rid of him he's going to be roll. they're going to be rolling him in and he is going to be playing that game for a long time he's going to be voting on whatever they need him to vote on and look it's okay to have an extra Republican vote, but again, be responsible. They should have someone else ready to go that's a Republican who could run for that seat and win. Maybe the former, was it the former lieutenant governor or was it the AG? I think it was the AG who just lost uh, Cameron in, in Kentucky, who just lost the governor's race. He'd be a good senator from there. But Kentucky could be a purple state at this point. I don't know. I don't know where they're going to go. So there you go. That's that's what Mitch McConnell is going to look like before they get rid of him from the uh, from the United States Senate. Get ready for that one. Uh, be excited for an elderly person, another elderly person pooping their pants in the United States Senate. Uh, Mitch McConnell will be that next person. Uh, another story I want to cover today. This is amazing to me. And I think you guys will all enjoy this one. This is uh, Wendy's. I don't know if you saw this earlier this week. What is this crappy advertising website? By the way, I love it when, there we go. Here is, I don't even know what qz.com, quartz.com. It doesn't matter because this story is actually accurate here. Uh, so Wendy says it won't do search pricing after all, uh, backtracking after backlash. So what Wendy's plan was, for those of you guys playing along at home, uh, Wendy's, if you've ever taken Uber, when things get busy on Uber, the price goes up a little bit. So Wendy's thought, hey, you know, people can afford food all day long. Why aren't we uh, why aren't we doing the same thing Uber does? And when it gets busy, say around lunchtime, we'll just jack up the prices of all of our stuff. 
So God knows what that would look like because I've seen times where a $10 Uber ride is $120 after the Super Bowl, when there's a rush at the airport. So who knows how much Wendy's was planning on charging you for a Frosty or a, a burger. I can only imagine that their burger could have gone all the way up to like 25 bucks. Who knows? Who knows? And then when you go and you get a, when you get the burger for three or $4 or whatever it's supposed to cost, people would have uh, been like, wow, I'm saving money. It's not uh, $25 when I got that burger. But that would have been, I think, disastrous, disastrous for Wendy's. And I want to read the story for you. So the fast food giant CEO has touted a new digital menu boards that would allow dynamic pricing at different times, uh, prompting comparisons to Uber. So uh, Wendy's would like a word about the difference between dynamic pricing and surge pricing. So when they announced this, everybody lost their minds and were like, Wendy's, you, you're you you're out of it. We're done here. Uh, earlier this month, we issued a fourth quarter and full year 2023 earnings resor- results and included an update on investments we were making to, er, in our digital business. One initiative is digital menu boards, which are being added to U.S. company-operated restaurants. We said these menu boards would give us more flexibility to change the display of featured items. This was misconstrued in some media reports as intent to raise prices when demand is highest at our restaurants. We have no plans to do that and would not raise prices when our customers are visiting us most. Well, they actually said that they were going to do that. The fast food fracas started earlier this month when uh, Tanner, is that the guy's name? That's, uh, I don't care. Why would anybody care? Uh, I'm going to assume Tanner. Yeah, Kirk Tanner, CEO Kirk Tanner. What happened to uh, Wendy? And what what was his name? What was Wendy's dad's name? Wendy. Dave Thomas. Whatever happened to Dave Thomas? Say I like that at the internet there. I can do that. Uh, The fast food fracas started earlier this month when Tanner touted the coming rollout of new digital menu boards and approximately $20 million investment that he said would extend to all U.S. restaurants the company operates by the end of next year. Tanner also highlighted how the digital menu boards would allow for pricing changes. Beginning in early 2025, we will begin testing some enhanced features like dynamic pricing and day part offerings along with AI-enabled menu changes and suggestive selling. Dynamic pricing means the pricing is going to change. They literally said, we never said that because they think you're stupid. But they literally said that they were going to offer dynamic pricing. So AI was going to control the pricing, basically, is what they were saying. So if there was a line around the block for Wendy's for some reason, say it was like Chick-fil-A, imagine going to Chick-fil-A at lunch and they had dynamic pricing. Chick-fil-A at lunch, man. Have you ever seen a, I I don't know what Chick-fil-A is like by you guys, but you go to Chick-fil-A for lunch, and they have a line. I don't think that fried chicken's worth it. I don't think a chicken sandwich is worth it. Sorry if you love Chick Fil A that much. I just don't think it's worth it. But uh, uh, worth less than that is a Wendy's burger. So I couldn't imagine going to Wendy's and having a line around the block. You think your combo meal is going to be? I don't even know what a combo meal is now. There. I mean, the way the prices are going, I'm going to assume a combo meal is like eleven bucks. And you show up and you order, and and you're stuck in the line, right? You're driving up. You're driving to Wendy's and you're stuck in the drive through line. You're going around because you know how they have the, the little kind of blockade there. You get into it and you're going there for lunch and they have dynamic pricing. So you get your dynamic pricing and you're pulling around and you're stuck in the line and you show up and you're, I guess, $11. Do they still do Biggie size? I haven't been to Wendy's in years. before. They'd still do Biggie size or whatever they call it. You show up and your Biggie size is now instead of $11, $38. And you're stuck in line and you just wanted to get lunch, but you just so happened that you showed up when there was a line at lunch and uh, and you hit the surge pricing and AI hit it. Because that's what happens with Uber is that the AI hits it when it's too popular. I remember I was trying to go to an airport one morning in Atlanta and the surge pricing had hit Uber and not Lyft. And so the Lyft ride to the airport was like $13. But the Uber ride was $89. And then it went up. I think it ended up being $106 or $120. But I paid $12 to go to the airport with the other brand. So here you have no competition. You're driving through the drive through surge pricing at Wendy's. I'm sorry, what do they call it? Dynamic pricing. And you would have been stuck. And your combo meal would have gone from like 11 or 12 bucks to probably 38 bucks or something. It could have gone crazy because AI is controlling it and they realize they have you trapped there. So you're just stuck like a sucker. 
I, 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 again, this was a terrible business move, and it's why they ran away from it, because they realized. Earlier this month, we issued a fourth quarter, blah, 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 blah. One initiative was digital menu boards. They're like, oh, it was just digital menu boards. Had nothing to do with pricing changed, even though it said literally dynamic pricing. Dynamic pricing means it's going to shift when you're there. They're, they're lying about it to try to get people back. Dynamic pricing is widely understood to mean changing prices as demand fluctuates to maximize revenue. That's exactly what it means. Wendy says Tanner didn't mean surge pricing when he said dynamic pricing. Well, then what did he mean? Because that's what dynamic pricing is. So they were going to absolutely rip off their customers and they got busted for it and, and they had to run away from it. This is a problem. And if businesses go to this model, again, if you're stuck in that drive-thru, if you're, you got nowhere else to go, you have a, a, a half hour for lunch or whatever, say you're, you know, you got a, a regular job, you got a half hour, 45 minutes, you got one place to go to, you go to the Wendy's, you want to get your food, but there's a line there. And while you're waiting in line, say you're inside and while you're waiting in line, you look up at the menu and it's like the number goes from 11 bucks to like 20 bucks and you're screwed. That's dynamic pricing. There's a line of five people. It goes up. Or say it starts to clear out. I mean, imagine what could happen there to, to the crowd at a Wendy's. Say you're waiting for the price to go down. You're like, hey, it's going to go down in about 20 minutes. So I'm just going to sit here until the end of my lunch break. And people are just going to hang out. I'll go, you know, take a, take a bathroom, uh, come back. And then the price drops. What have you even ordered? So say you order your food. These are other things that could happen with dynamic pricing on a menu. Say you order your food, you pay the 20 bucks or whatever it is, or 30 bucks that it goes up to, right? Because it's dynamic pricing. And again, Wendy's ran away from this real quick. Imagine your, the, your price is 30 bucks, and then you look up at the menu after you get it because it's calmed down by the time you got up there, and the price drops back down to 10. Things that could happen with dynamic pricing and AI running the menu. That's how stupid this is. But hey, make your money. But it scared them enough, though, and uh, and I think that's I think that's what's important is that it scared them enough that they ran away from it. We won't do surge pricing at all, guys. Nope, not at all, because we realized we effed up. Hey, if you bring your you bring your lunch to work, you can just the lines just to the microwave. Maybe they'll start doing surge pricing at the microwave. They'll have to put put a buck in it. Because you've been waiting too long. I just again all, all the things that could go wrong. There are so many things that could totally go wrong with surge pricing at a restaurant, and especially run by AI. I mean, I wonder how bad it could get. Say you're there like late night. I mean, you know when I would do it. Say you're there late night, right? You got a drunk line. You leave it open until two a.m. or three a.m. You got the drunk line coming through, And people don't pay attention to what they're doing. They just throw a credit card down. You got the nothing else is open around in the area. You realize you got everybody in line and they're stuck there. I'd make the burger meal 130 bucks. Screw you. You're drunk. You have no idea where you are. You got to, you know, or you got an Uber coming around. But, you know, most people like Taco Bell line late at night or high or whatever they are. They're coming around. They're stuck there. Combo meal number six. It's normally like 11 bucks. They don't even realize that the surge pricing shows up on the screen. 130 bucks. Enjoy your fries. Because you weren't paying attention. Hey, that's what business is. Hey, it's capitalism, right? You're dumb enough to go through it. But at least people uh, caught on to it and they started a backlash online. But there's all the things that can go wrong with surge pricing uh, with food. And who knows where it goes. At this rate, uh, when they're paying $20... For what is it? Minimum wage now in California is twenty dollars an hour. What do you expect is going to happen? They got to make money somehow. It ain't happening. Uh, it ain't happening through uh, through magic. It ain't, it ain't growing on trees. Anyway, that's going to be it for this episode of Tim Runs His Mouth. We're going to stream this every day. Uh, here's the deal: I got to figure out what time I'm going to be streaming it every day. But uh, you can also see it on American Greatness, the American Greatness podcast with Tim Runs His Mouth over there on American Greatness. Uh, follow me on Rumble, on uh, Twitter, on all the social medias. Uh, I will be around to do all this stuff. And in case you're wondering what my hat says, uh, since somebody asked, it's uh, a Fuente. That is uh, for Fuente Cigars. They make Opus X and a few other really, really nice cigars. Fuente Cigars are some of the best. And you can get them at our sponsor, 
CigarsDirect.com. You want to go to CigarsDirect.com, make sure you go there and get all of your cigar needs and desires. You can fill all of your cigar dreams over at CigarsDirect.com. That's, that's, a hell of a, that's a hell of a read right there. CigarsDirect.com. Make sure you go over and check it out. Uh, thanks for joining me today, guys, on uh, this. We're, we were running it here on Rumble Live. But as always, thanks for joining me on the Tim Runs His Mouth podcast. It's been a great time hanging out with you guys. I will see you next time. Thanks for joining me. See you soon.